Bouncing back and being resilient all year, and uh, and obviously learning from uh, all different experiences we've been through. Game five Monday night at Oracle. Saturday baseball is underway. Bottom of the second at Wrigley. The Rockies riding a six-game winning streak, leading Eddie Butler and the Cubs two to nothing. Bottom of the eighth in our nation's capital. The Nats on top of the Rangers, three to one. I'm Jeff Biggs. This is NBC Sports Radio. At California's number one volume GM dealer, Mark Christopher Auto Center, they're cranking up the heat because summer has begun to heat up and the deals have never been hotter. Right now, you can choose from over 1,600 vehicles in their one giant location with down to 0% for 72 months on selected models. It's California's biggest and best selection and it's never undersold. Chevy's, Buick's, Cadillac's, and GMC trucks. You'll find Mark Christopher Auto Center right on the 10 freeway in Ontario, or you can go to markchristopher.com. Mark Christopher is California's number one volume GM dealer. Family owned and doing things right since 1975. Remember, they're cranking up the heat on summer deals at Mark Christopher Auto Center. Vineyard exit of Interstate 10 in Ontario. <laughs> This is Pastor Greg from Chosen Generation Radio Show, heard right here on KCAA, 1 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Do any of these sound familiar? Not sleeping well? Waking up tired? Drinking more coffee than usual? Can't stay focused? Craving sugary drinks and snacks? Feel like you're stuck on a treadmill? Having trouble managing your weight? Not sick, but not firing on all cylinders? Any one of these could mean that you might have a system overload, and thyroidrenal might just be right for you. Think about it. You've probably been feeling like this for a while. Life has a way of wearing you down, and if you aren't getting the right nutrients, then physical and emotional wear and tear will take its toll. Most of us at some time or another could use some nutritional support for our adrenal and thyroid glands to bring things back in balance. Our bodies respond well to optimal nutrition to keep daily energy levels up and stress levels down. Try Thyroid Adrenal from Michael's Naturopathic Programs, a nourishing support formula with vitamins, minerals, and herbs to put back what life takes out. Look for Michael's on the label. We're serious about good health. Thyroid Adrenal is available at leading health food stores nationwide. If you don't see it on the shelf, then ask for it by name. Thyroid Adrenal. This is KCAA. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bend. And I Good afternoon, IE. The Inland Empire. It's the Ed O'Brien Show, and we are back on a Saturday at noontime uh, with. Who does the Ed O'Brien Show? Ed O'Brien does the Ed O'Brien Show. Uh, and we are lucky to have the ex- extraordinary uh, Carlos over there running the show, hooking up uh, at my request some Folsom Prison Blues. Uh, I was a little worked up last week. Uh, had uh, a lot of uh, negative energy flowing over the subject matter of uh, housing. Uh, any of you that... Uh, Look, if you get a long weekend and you're up there, say, uh, at mid-coast uh, and you're getting that June gloom uh, and you just can't take, you know, the 72, 73 degree uh, breeze coming in, uh, why don't you come on down to San Bernardino? I'll uh, bring you over to our 2nd Street Starbucks and uh, introduce you to the IE. And uh, you'll get a sense, get a sense of how big California is and... Uh, or the sixth or seventh biggest economy in the world, uh, you wouldn't know it by uh, walking around San Bernardino, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's something that would really uh, work any of you up that uh, care about your fellow man. But uh, the reason I'm uh, sort of reflecting back on the last week, we, you know, we all have that guy or that uh, you know that friend, you know that uh, always has that advice for you, you know, like, uh, hey, you know, why'd you buy that thing? I got a guy. Oh, you brought your car over there? Oh, I got a guy. I got a guy that would fix you up. Or, uh, you know, whatever you do, it's the wrong way. And then that's when that uncle shows up. You know, so uh, as soon as I got done with the show last week, you know, I was trying to wipe the sweat off my brow. And, uh, you know, Uncle Sal called and says, uh, 
Hey, uh, Nephew Eddie, I, I don't know what you were doing there, but uh, you were certainly throwing out some stats and rattling on and going on with the quite frankly. You know, so I invited him. Well, if you could do better, Uncle Sal, why don't you join me? And, uh, you know, I'm hoping, uh, I don't know what he does. He usually does like a thousand push-ups uh, noontime Saturday. He had me doing it one time and, uh, well, I don't do a thousand push-ups or, or sit-ups or... Uh, or pull-ups. Uh, it, it, it was a tough Saturday. Anyway, I, I know Sal, uh, Uncle Sal's out there listening, and uh, I'm sure he's uh, writing down some critiques. Uh, but uh, it just reminded me that I needed to uh, remind all of us that uh, live and work in and around San Bernardino County and see the sea of homeless people that are struggling. Orange County did a uh, report. This is what I was... Uh, rattling off at the end of uh, last week's hour in that uh, Orange County March uh, Orange County Register March 8 2017 uh, quoted the uh, University of California Irvine study that looked at Orange County's uh, homeless issue and uh, I think it uh, pales in comparison uh, they pinpointed about $45,000 a year for each um, uh, each homeless person. That's what the cost to the general fund is. Now that includes trips to the emergency room, uh, trips to jail, uh, fire costs that go out and uh, deal with uh, a person we see a lot in the in the heat of the summer uh, struggling with dehydration. So there are all of these costs associated that we pick up. So when you see that homeless person, uh, that is a, a high user of our tax dollars. Uh, so what, again, uh, one of the themes of the show is uh, either you care about humanity or you care about your tax dollars. Uh, but most of us are uh, concerned with both. When you see that homeless person uh, in uh, San Bernardino, you could call 211, uh, and that'll uh, connect you with somebody that uh, knows what to do and can manage uh, delivering services. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but I could tell you I have used it, and uh, it, it's worked. Um, and others have worked, used it, and it's, uh, you know, it's a work in progress. Uh, but what... Uh, what the UC Irvine study shows us is that if we invest in housing, uh, we save millions of dollars uh, just by investing in housing. And uh, yeah, I was uh, I was really worked up last week over that uh, that issue. And uh, well, uh, every Monday through Friday, when I come on down from the high desert into the IE Valley. Uh, I am struck with the challenges that face us, uh, but I know we're willing, we're willing to do it if we can know the way and we understand the numbers. And so that's why I reference you to the Orange County Register, March 8, 2017. Just look at it. I would think uh, most of us agree that uh, UC Irvine is a uh, very credible institution of higher learning and research. Um, but that's, uh, that's uh, for uh, another show to follow up on and a recap of last week. We have a lot to get to uh, on a number of issues of criminal justice reform. Uh, again, whether you care about the humanity of it or you care about the tax dollars, there are things we need to do that will become uh, or well, if we choose to do it, our system would be much more effective. Um, and when I was, uh, you know, talking to Uncle Sal, yeah, just like most things, Uncle Sal has an opinion on on uh, bail reform. Uh, but he said uh, if he can get done with his pull-ups, he might, uh, well, he'll be tuning in, and uh, maybe we'll be lucky enough to uh, be graced with his opinion. But I got, you know, I, I before I get to to the substance of uh, today's show, uh, you know, I got to reflect back on what happened over this week, 
And hopefully, although I'm not exactly confident uh, that the great majority of us uh, sees uh, that what occurred in Washington is in a, mo uh, a, a, a momentous occasion. Pardon me while I sip my favorite cafe beverage because uh, I, I still scratch my head over uh, the exchange between former FBI Director Comey and our elected leader, leader of the free world, man who is in charge of the greatest military might the world has ever seen, uh, well, President Donald Trump, who called uh, Comey a liar, and as you recall, he said, uh, better hope there aren't any tapes. And when pressed for those tapes, uh, we didn't get a yes, they exist, or no, they don't. We got a, you'll hear about it later, and you're going to be disappointed, much like uh, much like the tax returns. You'll hear about it later, you'll be disappointed, and we're still hearing about it. Uh, and, and what was interesting, obviously, if you were uh, as glued to it as I was, and according to the New York Times, lots of people were glued to it. It got a better rating than did the uh, NBA basketball championship uh, game, which is encouraging, uh, thinking that people tuned in, but uh, like a lot of things these days, we could tune in and see the same facts and come to wildly different conclusions. Uh, Comey obviously called uh, the president a liar, uh, and he took great offense uh, to the fact that the president uh, characterized the morale at the FBI as in uh, very low, and Comey didn't know what he was doing. Uh, so you had the former uh, head of the great power of the FBI calling the president a liar, and you have the president calling Comey a liar. And who knows? Maybe there are tapes or not. Uh, but what was really unsettling is when, and if you do like I do, I, I, you know, I love to get up at 4.30 in the morning and, you know, turn on the coffee maker and uh, tune in to uh, Washington Journal on C-SPAN. I encourage you all to do that. Uh, because you can realize uh, in a moment that uh, this is a big country. Uh, the callers that uh, the next day were uh, fuming where uh, Trump can do no wrong and uh, the rest of us that thought, wow, we just may be heading into some sort of a crisis uh, over the legitimacy of our uh, law enforcement at the federal level or our elected officials at the uh, at the presidential level. Uh, somebody's not telling the truth and the only way to really know is if there are tapes and uh, we were alluded to that there, there that there might be tapes but nonetheless uh, please follow that along because this is an interesting development and uh, as you know uh, the highly respected uh, former director is conducting his own investigation and is creating quite a team of investigators, uh, lawyers, and uh, we all look forward to what Trump indicated, that he is going to testify under oath. So stand by and let's look to that. But that's the week in review, and we will be looking forward to another more substantive substantive discussion on bail reform and other things criminal matter when we criminal law matters when we come back in 90 seconds it's rolling around the bend and i ain't seen the sunshine since i don't know when i'm stuck in Folsom prison and time keeps dragging on 
I'm getting older and noticing that my body just doesn't work as well as it used to. So I like to keep fit as possible by hitting the gym a few times a week. Recently, I started having a nagging bicep pain and it got so bad I couldn't even lift the weights. When I was complaining about it to a friend, he told me about Angioprim. He said chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in veins and arteries that may cause blockages. You know, after just one week of taking Angioprim, the pain was gone and now I'm back in the gym full strength. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or talk to a trained consultant. Call angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221 or go to the website angioprim.com. If you're looking for a full or part-time sales position and you have radio, TV, or print media experience, KCAA has a great opportunity waiting for you that pays the highest commissions in the market. KCAA is the only station in the IE that broadcasts on three frequencies, so advertisers receive three ads for one low rate. This makes KCAA a must-buy for every local business. If you're interested in a sales position with us, call 909-885-8502 or email CEO at KCAARadio.com. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bay. And I ain't seen Thank you, Carlos. If it wasn't for Carlos, I would have had the mic off. And one of the things uh, an amateur uh, learns quickly in radio is uh, it doesn't work unless you have a microphone. So thank you very much, Carlos. Really appreciate that. Um, we are on KCAA, AM 1050, and 106.5 FM, 102.3 FM radio, for those of you that don't have AM radio anymore. Um, call in and join the uh, debate. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, you can get a hold of us at 188-909-1050. Um, sitting here in the center of San Bernardino City, uh, about uh, a mile from my office and about a stone's throw from the courthouse, uh, where we process uh, thousands of cases each year. And, uh, you know, on the way in, I was thinking, uh, what is my... Uh, one of my favorite prison songs, and it's hard to beat Johnny Cash, uh, feeling the prison blues there in uh, Folsom Prison, which I find uh, to be right on topic for this show and the substance, because what we have today, right now, as we do every day in California, thousands of people, frankly, in a year, hundreds of thousands, that uh, sit in jail for no reason. Uh, and I know uh, that will uh, shock the conscience of some of you because I know that there is a uh, segment of folks that absolutely believe that if one is arrested, one must have committed an offense and must be sent to prison and punished for whatever it is that they were arrested for. I get that, and uh, I suspect by the end of the uh, presentation here, you'll either be completely on my side and you will abandon your longtime ideology, which, uh, which I'm hoping for, uh, makes the issue of bail reform a lot easier. Uh, or, on the other hand, uh, I would like to at least give you some independent facts uh, that might persuade you to take pause and contemplate whether or not what we do in the jail system in the court systems around the state makes sense frankly around the country although uh, many areas of our country are far more forward on the issue of bail and the idea of presumed innocent uh, than we are here in California uh, but what bail does is uh, essentially two things. Uh, it guarantees that the rich person, no matter how dangerous, will be out in the street within a matter of hours. 
And the poor person, no matter how innocent, uh, will sit behind bars until the criminal justice system decides it's good and ready to deal with that poor person's case. Um, and it uh, slogs on, the criminal justice system does, uh, days and days before uh, a person can even see a lawyer um, because we just don't uh, set our priorities straight, right? Unless we care about that person sitting in jail and processing their guilt or innocence in a timely manner, then there's no rush uh, to get that case to court. There's no rush to make a decision. Um, and that's too bad because whether we want to accept it or not, that person often is one, made more likely to re-offend or be re-arrested for no offense. Uh, that's a fairly consistent uh, conclusion uh, by the studies that look into this. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You lose your car, you lose your apartment. And once you lose your car and your apartment, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, uh, to bounce back, especially when you also have lost your job. Uh, and do we want to think of our uh, judicial system as causing that kind of thing? Um, and if you're rich, as I said, no matter whether you were arrested uh, for swerving after uh, a few martinis at your fancy dinner and driving under the influence at a .25, you're out. You post your bail, you're gone. Um, if Say you're a petty thief that you were uh, trying to steal baby formula, which we see uh, frequently. And in case you had noticed over the uh, recent history, we started uh, locking up uh, baby formula because, uh, you know, poor moms are trying to get uh, to feed their babies. Uh, and they end up in jail. Uh, and sometimes a person didn't commit an offense. They were sitting over here. Uh, if you come by our $350 million uh, nicely built courthouse, just under it, there is a homeless encampment that is frequently cleaned out by uh, code enforcement. But nonetheless, uh, homeless people, by definition, have no home, so they must go somewhere, and they frequently um, come back to this park and oftentimes they're arrested for illegal camping um, and one of the hallmarks of our judicial system is you must to commit a crime have done something willfully uh, and necessity is a defense and so we well know that by the time you get to jury trial with a homeless person on the issue of illegal camping, uh, it's unlikely that case will ever be proven beyond a reason reasonable doubt when the homeless person simply says, where else did you want me to go? I have nowhere to go. Be that as it may, that's the big picture of uh, the matter of bail reform. But I want to provide some statistics. And I know statistics can be boring, it can be dreadful to listen to, uh, but without them, we really don't know whether something needs to be reformed or not. So, I want to look at some statistics that were published, uh, and you can go online to uh, the California Attorney General website, where they thankfully track uh, quite a bit of data that goes on in our court systems around the state. Um, and if you spend a good deal of time looking at the numbers, uh, the person who's even the most cynical has to be struck with what goes on over the course of a year and obviously, you don't get to data for a year unless you have day-to-day -day 
uh, happenings at court. And when any practitioner such as myself that spends years in the criminal courts knows that this data captures what we see every day. Um, in one year, 2015, 38 percent of cases uh, w were dismissed. That means that the person was arrested, uh, charged with a felony, and sat in jail awaiting the end result of their case. And sadly, though beneficially in some respects, uh, it came to light that there was no way that case was going to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. And 38 percent, over a third, uh, cases were dismissed. And this is uh, rather telling uh, about whether or not bail is needed. So imagine the poor folks arrested sitting behind jail wondering what's going to happen uh, and if they were able uh, to peruse the internet and no doubt would go directly to the Attorney General website to determine geez what is the likelihood I'm going to be convicted uh, they could look to their left look to their right and know one of those individuals was going to walk out without being convicted of anything um, and if they were charged with a violent felony, according to the Attorney General website, 2015, 42% were not going to be convicted uh, of that felony, violent felony, for which they were charged with. That alone, it would seem to me, would suggest even if I may label one as conservative, even the most conservative pro-law enforcement person should take pause at that stat, particularly when we think that, or supposedly we subscribe to the, to the idea, frankly the ideal, um, that a person who is charged with the crime is innocent till, until proven guilty. Uh, but as I say, we know now one in third and 42 percent of those charged with felonies in the state of California will have their case dismissed. Now, let me uh, bring it more locally and sadly it has to be anecdotal evidence uh, from my own experience here in uh, San Bernardino. On average, year to year, over say the last five years, 50% of those charged with misdemeanors uh, will have their case dismissed. Anywhere from 40 to 50% um, who were arrested, charged with a misdemeanor, uh, too poor to get out of jail often, uh, is going to have their, that person's going to have their case dismissed, flat out gone. Again, one in two, one and two people uh, have their case dismissed in San Bernardino. So let's uh, take a break. In 90 seconds, we'll be back to pick up the discussion over the matter of what this means uh, to our residents and what we can do to stop it. I don't know when I'm stuck in Folsom Prison And time keeps dragging on Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. 
and angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M. Angioprim.com slash radio or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. So you went to dinner last night, you had your favorite pasta, Ugh. or maybe you had a heavy spicy meal and it left you, Ugh. get the tea.com. Maybe you mowed down a huge steak and your plumbing is all plugged, Ugh. get the tea.com. Our super strength tea will take care of your occasional, Ugh. It's all organic and non-GMO. Get rid of Ugh. We have so many great supplements, but our super tea is number one. Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. My head and cry. Welcome back to the Ed O'Brien Show, AM 1050. 909 1050. If you'd like to give us a call, that's 1-88-909-1050. 102.3 FM, 106.5, if you prefer that side of the dial. Uh, what we're talking about is bail reform. It's a, uh, it's a big issue out there for those of us that uh, are in uh, criminal law, uh, are uh, observing some of the debates uh, on uh, the progressive movement. Um, and this is uh, one of the uh, hot topics out there. And rightfully so. Um, and the reason why we picked it up here is we want to give some uh, some data, some context to the debate because most of us, uh, I guess thankfully, w- would uh, likely spend uh, our days never having to be personally impacted by the criminal justice system. But there are segments of our uh, population that are uh, often and unfortunately uh, wrapped up in the criminal justice system because they are poor. Um, uh, we started out the show showing that the homeless are uh, arrested for being homeless. Um, the poor person is arrested for uh, crimes that they ultimately have dismissed against them. Uh, so they're wasting days in our county jails, which are very expensive. And so when we think that 38% of felonies across the state are being dismissed against those that are accused with felonies in our own county, 50%, somewhere between 40 per- 50% of misdemeanors across the county over the last five years, year to year, are, are dismissed. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for that. That's um, not necessarily... Uh, a, a direct relationship to um, bad prosecution uh, because we want uh, district attorneys to make the wise choice to dismiss a case that they can't make uh, for whatever reason uh, or exercise that discretion uh, once they have had time to really digest what the case is about. We want them dismissing it. We don't want them moving forward to see, well, uh, let's see what the jury does. And sadly, there are uh, prosecutors that make that decision because they don't want to make the hard decision to let somebody go because they can't prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt. They would rather uh, bring a jury in and let the jury decide. So I'm not making the argument just because 50% of the cases are dismissed, there are uh, bad prosecutions. Um, we can make that case. Uh, and uh, down the road on one Saturday, I will make that case. Um, but for now, uh, we are dealing with just the pretrial, just people sitting in detention waiting uh, for the opportunity to prove uh, or have proved against them that they didn't do it. Um, and I know there are folks that just don't believe uh that when somebody sits in jail and they say they didn't do it, um, that they didn't do it. Uh, I know. I, I have family members that just can't wrap their head around the, the possibility that that is true. Uh, 
But I think the stats show that. Um, and that means to the person, uh, what we see, for example, if a person is stopped out there in the street on their way home from work, say they're a minimum wage job, and they are stopped for having either uh, a license plate bulb out, a tail light out, uh, or uh, more nebulous is the uh, one we see, which is failed to signal when somebody on the road could have been affected, which is the standard, by the way. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that uh, we could look at one day is just how many police shootings result uh, from that type of conduct, that type of contact. Uh, it's, um, it's extraordinary that somebody could be stopped for such a thing and then shot and perhaps killed. Uh, again, uh, that is a, a down-the-road show where we will uh, cover police shootings and those that are justified and those are, uh, that are reviewed and are found to be uh, justified, notwithstanding uh, troubling facts surrounding those. But suppose you're pulled over and you're not shot, but you're hauled into jail uh, because you have a failure to pay warrant out for you uh, because you forgot to pay your last ticket for the tail light, and quite frankly, you couldn't afford the tail light. Uh, it's hard for some of us to imagine that's true, but again, it's true. Uh, Fifteen dollars, uh, twenty dollars uh, for a single mom, maybe that doesn't know how to uh, change uh, the tail light, uh, is a problem. Hauled off to jail. Um, what then happens is the car is impounded, uh, and that impound fee is going to be in the hundreds of dollars just for one day. And if the mother sits for one day, two days, three days until she sees a judge and the judge throws that case out and will throw the case out because they say, oh, you've been in jail for two or three days, we'll give you credit against your fine, and now you're free to go, and you are no longer obligated to the court. Good. That mom now has to go get her way from uh, West Valley, Fontana, 4th Street, out to wherever she lives on her own, no money in the pocket. Uh, hopefully she has a cell phone functioning so she could get picked up, ultimately uh, reunited with the family and uh, then has to decide how is she going to get her job back, how is she going to get her car back, uh, and sometimes how am I going to get the, how is she going to get her apartment back? These are things that happen every day. Um, and there hasn't been, as far as I am aware, uh, a complete and independent study of San Bernardino, but this happens a lot. Uh, we do know that the Justice Department, when it was allowed to uh, do independent investigations of police work and court work, found that this was prominent uh, in Ferguson, where um, there was a uh, dramatic civil dissent in the streets of Ferguson. And one reason is that the courts were essentially being funded by poor folks being uh, find. So when we say 50% of the people arrested and have their case dismissed, or 38% of the felons have their case dismissed, it's not a win necessarily for them. It's good that they're out of the system, but they're often out of the system and left with nothing. Uh, and they must start over if they can. This is why this the studies will show and have shown that being arrested alone and incarcerated for a period of time is, if not correlated, cause is a causal factor to rearrest 
or reoffending. Um, because once somebody loses their transportation, housing, has to take 10% of their earnings, whatever the case may be, and fund a ticket, um, they're set up for failure. And this is why bail reform is needed. Because keeping a poor person behind bars because they can't afford the cash bail sets them back, whether they are guilty or not. Again, and it's one-third or every other in misdemeanors that aren't guilty. Uh, and so we need to take a hard look at that because we likely are setting them up for failure. Uh, and so you know cash bail really is meaningless to us uh, except for uh, the bail bondsmen. Very few wealthy people are actually arrested. It's middle class and below. And the middle class folks that are arrested for whatever the case may be, bail, spousal abuse, um, whatever it is that they did, uh, or didn't do, but are suspected of doing, what happens is they are arrested, they are processed, and they contact a bail bondsman who comes out uh, and say the scheduled bail is $50,000. It's a very common bail for low-level uh, felony conduct. Anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000 is what you typically deal with and you typically see. And so the person in jail will put down... 10% of the bail fee. So that's $5,000 on a credit card, $10,000 on a credit card, uh, and they're out. The poor person, obviously, without a credit card, sits. Now, this does not make our community any safer. So if we're thinking bail makes us safer, uh, putting money on a credit card does nothing to protect our safety. But... What it does do, by keeping that poor person in custody and unable to post the bail, as I show, uh, they are likely to be set up for failure. If you take what I'm suggesting as the reality of many people being released. Now, there are things we can do and the things that we should do. Uh, that would address the issue of pretrial detention so that what we're doing is not setting up uh, people to fail in the future, but also to enhance the public safety of the individual that can afford bail. What we want to look at is the bill currently uh, off calendar up in Sacramento, but was on calendar in late May, and that's AB 42. Uh, what we're looking at with AB 42 is nothing short of uh, a drastic reform, but in that bill, it unfortunately used, uh, I say unfortunately because it was the cause of much discussion, and that was it mandated that counties adopt uh, a pretrial agency to monitor and treat those that are released so that, one, they can get the services that they need, whether it's drug addiction, uh, mental health, uh, alcohol. And it would also do risk assessment. So I want to cover that with the hope that what we can do is simply amend 42 and reignite the debate and really get some real reform. So we will cover that in our last 10 or 15 minutes of the show, and I'll be back in 90 seconds. Thank you. I know I can't be free But those people keep them moving And that's what tortures me For several years, KCAA has been marketing the Longevity brand of nutritional and personal care products. Our experience with Longevity has been 100% positive, so we are pleased to recommend them to you. Regarding nutritional supplements, we recommend Pollen Burst and the Berry Flavor. 
and Tangy Tangerine 2.0 in the tablet form. For regularity issues, we recommend 3-Day Cleanse, and for personal care, we recommend Morning Hydration Cream. You can shop online for Longevity at www.kcaateam.com, or you can order by phone by calling 800-982-3197 and tell customer support that you are part of the KCAA team. Longevity is an American company based in San Diego. Call Longevity at 800-982-3197 and ask about monthly auto ship that allows you to buy Longevity products at wholesale prices. That number again, 800-982-3197. You worked too hard, you ate too much, the cheesecake made you greedy. Let your aching head and stomach hear this message from Old Speedy. Alka-Seltzer, plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Ah, those speedy Alka-Seltzer bubbles burst into action to relieve your upset stomach and aching head fast. He was only as directed. Oh, what a relief it is. What a relief. Welcome back to the Ed O'Brien Show, KCAA, 1050 AM, 102.8. 3 FM, 106.5 FM. Uh, Uncle Sal must be stuck up there on the uh, pull-up bar. He's probably winding up around now, 49, maybe 50 pull-ups. Uh, it's too bad. I'm, I'm sure that uh, his nephew's going to get a call. But I, I, what I try to do this hour is uh, channel Uncle Sal so that uh, I would not lose it uh, and I would be more calm and deliberate with my message uh, this Saturday. Uh, so, if he's out there listening, he, uh, he knows that, uh, his nephew keeps his, uh, wise, wise, uh, sage-like advice, uh, to heart. AB42, what that did is said to the counties, man, why don't you, uh, go ahead and, uh, develop a pretrial uh, agency so that we can bail out and put into the community those that uh, are in jail waiting trial. And because it mandated that, without getting into all the technicalities of our state versus county law, counties were uh, loath to buy in uh, because uh, there was an estimate at one point of billions of dollars needed to do such, such work. So. As I sat and contemplated that first big step for California, I was thinking just how we could use their model, that model of AB42, maybe tweak it a little bit uh, so that we could achieve real reform. Uh, and it occurred to me that we have a historical precedent that has been characterized as quite successful uh, in reforming our criminal law. Uh, procedures, uh, and it was a win-win, and that is the, uh, in 2009, our state legislator and governor signed SB 678. SB 678 essentially said this to the counties, if you, you county, reduce the number of your residents that you're sending to state prison, we will cut you a reimbursement check uh, in a proportional, a, pro a proportional amount. Um, if you develop the right procedures and the right, for a lack of a better word, infrastructure or logistics to keep individuals out of state prison, not only will the state save money, of the money we save, we will send back to you. And counties mobilized. Counties mobilized in a big way. One of the things that every county did practically was develop a risk assessment, meaning this. Well, if we give this person a risk assessment of their likelihood to reoffend and it's low, why don't we just put them on probation? We'll monitor them. We'll keep them in our community We'll give them whatever services they need to be successful, whether that is um, mental health treatment, 
substance abuse treatment, alcohol, job programming, all sorts of, in some counties they developed a, a GED program. All of these mechanisms were developed and implemented as a result of the promise for reimbursement. So, instead of in lockstep taking a case and saying to the person, well, you failed on probation even though we hadn't supervised you or given you real services, we're going to send you to state prison for your failure, and then the state has to pick up the fee. No, no, no. The counties didn't do that anymore. They took advantage of the reimbursement, mobilized and created just the kind of agency that AB 42 is calling for. So AB 42 need not develop the quote-unquote pretrial agency. All that it needs to do is a simple redo of the language of the mandatory pretrial agency and simply say to the counties, hey, what we're going to do from the AB uh, 109 funds that they distribute, which is already being sent, and counties are already uh, using that money to implement mental health, substance abuse, and all of those treatments mentioned before, and also the 678 money. So the counties are being reimbursed large sums of money already and implementing exactly the kind of system that AB 42 contemplates. The trouble that AB 42 got itself into was the mandate. Because, again, if you mandate something, the states will reimburse the counties, but in bad times, uh, they'll usually strip the money. So there wasn't dollars attached to it like SB 678 and AB 109. So if you take AB 42 and simply say to the counties, what we're going to do is develop a formula that for every day you reduce pretrial detention, you're going to get money. And we need, no, uh, we need no language to talk about infrastructure because what the counties will do is mobilize and figure out what they need to do, one, to keep the community safe, two, to get that person out of jail and keep that person moving along uh, in their treatment. It's already successfully being done. According uh, to a couple of... Uh, no, the Rand uh, Cor Corporation did a study, and I can't remember. Uh, I didn't put the site down, but let's let's just put that aside and take what the Judicial Council of California found on um, SB 678. The Judicial Council did a full evaluation, I believe, in July 2015, and you can look it up. I would encourage you to look it up because what it does show is when you properly incentivize local government, local government can do miraculous things. Uh, silos drop. Uh, the no we can't turns into yes we can and yes we will. Uh, Judicial Council said that not only did SB 678 with the incentive of keeping people out of prison save the state hundreds of millions of dollars, counties were reimbursed in the millions of dollars and quote SB 678 was a success at achieving its goals end quote that's the courts saying that uh, it seems to me that that's a hard place to attack for uh, bias um, and so there you go if we have a successful model already and that model we know is being used in the counties, and the counties are achieving success with that money, and with that money they're doing all of the things that AB 42 called for. Instead of just bailing out somebody, you evaluate their risk. And there are already a number of risk assessments tools being used by the counties. So they're not asking the county to develop something uh, that they have no experience with. 
they're telling the counties collaborate between probation and departments of mental health and public health and the sheriff to do all of those treatments and case managements uh, to keep people from reoffending through no threat of punishment, though it's there, but really offer of services. We have a, a great model here, uh, and I think a lot of counties have adopted the model of the day reporting center, a one-stop shop. A person, all the person needs to do is get to the one-stop shop, and there are an array of services there. But here's the key in my mind, uh, and that is this. We know the number of folks that I have demonstrated uh, have their case dismissed, 80-something percent, 89 percent of the folks are going to be out in the community in probation. And I don't want to have to run on my stats, so I'm going to close up here pretty quickly. Carlos, how many times, how much have we got? Three minutes. Okay, good. Um, everybody arrested but 11 percent of the individuals, according to the Attorney General in 2015, are going to return to the community. So let's, according to Let's use AB 42 to push those array of services from 678 and 1109 forward to the front door of the jail so that we can get people in the treatment right away rather than having to wait through the long process of the court system. And what's nice is if AB 42 can calculate and use these great statisticians and economists and uh, CPAs to establish how much it will cost each county for each pretrial delay, for pretrial detention delay, meaning this, that for every dollar the person's kept in, it's gonna, we're going to lose reimbursement. What we can do then is attribute directly to the district attorney's decision-making process how much they are costing county taxpayers, meaning this, or the conclusion If the DA decides, no, we don't want to give the person a plea bargain for credit for time served, we want 30 days, 180 days in the county jail, and the person does not want to accept that plea bargain and sits in jail, we know that most of those cases, at 50% or a third, are going to end up in dismissal. That case has just cost the county quite a bit of money. So for the first time, once the state establishes a dollar figure for each day in jail, the county taxpayers can look at the DA and say, because on that case you decided that the person needed to stay in jail and take a deal, and they sat for 100 days, we now know how much you cost us. And over the years, as we accumulate those dollar figures, finally, for the first time, we'll have a real sense of what the DA is doing and how we can evaluate them. This is the Ed O'Brien Show. Next week, uh, we'll be uh, covering another uh, social justice issue. And have a good weekend, and we look forward to that uh, conversation next week. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you then. And I let that lonesome whistle KCAA Loma Linda, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM, and now 102.3 FM. Your NBC Sports Radio update.